I wish I could have brought this clip up. It was a clip of academics. I think it's old talking about like podcasting not being a wave. And I'm I'm curious, like not not being a wave anymore. I'm curious to think yeah. know what you think about that. Do you think it's it's it's, it's slow for podcasting? Where where do you think the the uh the state of podcasting culture is right now? Podcasting is is going to become a strain area because there's not as much advertising dollars being shifted towards it. Uh-huh. So like I've seen a lot of podcasts that have been going strong for four or five, six years shut down because the advertising just isn't there. Mm. So like it becomes more difficult because you have to find a loyal audience that wants to support what you do. So yeah, like it, it, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to, and podcasting became the new hot thing. Like rap was 20, 30 years ago, mm-hmm. where it's like, people just felt like, Oh, this easy. All I got to do is get a mic and record and put a camera on me and I'm going to be lit. And then once they, <laughs> you know what I mean? People will start realizing there's more work. It, it ain't just as easy as you think it is. Then, you know, you got to see a lot of people come in. You see a lot of people go. But then when it got crazier, because after the advertisers started realizing, man, we dumping a lot of money and we not getting enough, enough return, then they started pulling out a podcast. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like the industry, I, I feel like it is the normal flex and shrink. Same thing with the Internet. When the Internet first was, you know, invented it kind of exploded. Everybody was like, yo, this is the wave. Everything's going to happen. People invested too early. And, but the technology hadn't caught up to make the internet what it is today. So what ended up happening is when people invested billions of dollars and the technology didn't catch up fast enough, people went, man, fuck this internet shit. And then the internet collapsed on itself. So the value of it collapsed until it slowly got to the place that it needed to be until it realized what it could be. Podcasting is the same thing. Like people got into it. It was a rush. Everybody jumped into it. A lot of money got jumped into it. Some people did make out. Some people really exploded, but uh, most of people collapsed. Mm. And now the people that are really in it because they love it, this is their real passion, this is what they're really about, they're going to see their way through it and their audience is going to help them see their way through it and they're going to roll, you know, they're going to expand and become what they're going to become. But I feel like there's always, first of all, there's always going to be a place where people are going to enjoy conversation from other people, period. There's always going to be a need for the di- for the dissemination of information, mm. and podcast is the best way to disseminate information without worrying about you know twenty million commercials and two minute segments and three minute segments. So like I will always argue with people. There's always going to be somebody that loves long form. Me, I I, I listen to podcasts eighty percent of my day, every day, every single day, seven fucking days a week. So like, it, it, and I know there's other people like me. So. I think I think I said it before. I feel like, yeah, podcasting is definitely losing its form or the hype around it. But that's the perfect mm-hmm. time for podcasters because now is you're you're gonna see this separation of from boys to men, right? We're gonna see who are serious and then they can they can eventually flourish into their careers because it's we and now all the people that aren't serious. So like even exactly. for me in this space, it's like podcasting became is becoming my second nature. And I love mm-hmm. that, and, and, and it might have came from the running or whatever, but like I love it because it's not as much pressure. Like now, mm-hmm. I do it because that's just a part of my day, right? I edit, right. I, I get it done from A to Z because that's just a part mm-hmm. of my day. And mm-hmm. yeah, that might mean that I have to, I might have to get a job. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay, just get a job. You, you live your regular life, but now it's not as much pressure as trying to be like this superstar podcaster. Like I can just be me. Mm-hmm. Like I said, if I gotta do Uber Eats, I, so be it. Yo, you do that podcast? Yeah, yeah, check it out. <laughs> you feel me? Like, so be it. And um, it feels good to be relieved of that pressure because it's like, bro, I don't have to be a celebrity. Like, even if you think, if, if a lot of people know me, okay, cool, I ain't make it yet. Why are you doing Uber Eats? Because I need some money. <laughs> you feel me? Like, it, 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 it takes away from, I mean, it, it takes that pressure off of me. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like, yeah, I got to do my podcast. I'm going to do my podcast. That's a non-negotiable, but I also can be, I can be a regular human being now. I feel like at one yeah. point in time, when the numbers are so high and you, and you looked at as a, a, as a certain persona, it's like you have to wear this, this superhero cape. And now I feel like I don't have to wear that anymore, right? It's like, I just feel yeah. like I can be Jay. I can be a regular person in, in, in life and enjoy my life and get a corporate job if I have to or whatever. And just know that my podcast is not that it's second to anything. It's just second nature. Is this that's a part of me as yeah. well? That's just you know what I'm saying. I, so I think to answer the question, I definitely think it's dying out, but I think it's dying out for the good. 
Yeah, I I feel like the fake the fake version of it, you know, the 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 facade of it is dying so that the real thing can live. You know what I mean? I I I definitely I, I I've always when I did what I do whether it was radio or podcasting, it was always based off of my need to learn or my need to just get shit off my chest. It was never about, you know, oh, I'm going to be popular and everybody's going to follow me and know who I am. I hated that. Like, that's the reason why I love radio as much as I did. I'm like, y'all ain't got to see my face. You, you know, I ain't got to be around. Like, you you, you ain't got to know what I look like. You know, you just going to hear me talk. Y'all get these jokes. You know what I mean? We going to have fun with it. We get in, we get out. I move on with my life. Like, I never, I, that was never, you know, popularity was never a desire of mine. Mm. And, and like, to me, I feel like it's weird when a nigga, I don't, I, you know what? I understand if a person has a healthy understanding of, I want to acquire popularity so that I can, you know, I can leverage it to make money. I get that. Mm. But the people that need the public's attention and need people to love them. Like I was like, Whoa, that's, that's, I, I that's yeah. never been, you're going to, you're going to, you live by the praise. You're going to die by the critics. And that's just how it is. Right. Like if you, if right. you, if you yearn for that popularity so much, then you're eventually going to go into a state of depression when you don't right. get it. Right. So right. I understand that hundred percent. I think also right. when it comes to podcasting, a lot of things that we overlook is, uh, Shout out to the chat. We see you. Appreciate you for commenting, man. That means a lot. Mm -hmm. We gonna be here where there's three or three hundred people, regardless. That's just what we're doing. But um, yeah. another thing that people overlook when it comes to podcasting is the field that it can get you in, right? So like now I'm doing productions. Like I have a whole career mm -hmm. in doing production and producing content because I walked into this podcast lane. So I learned so much from it. So like, don't overlook the things that you can learn from podcasting, right? Like I'm doing consultations with people. People be just paying me $200 here, there, a thousand dollars here, there, just to be able to tell them how to set up their content, how to set up the camera, what camera to get, what, how you should do it. Right? Like this mm -hmm. is a whole business now, it, not just podcasting and just having shit talking for, shit with my friends. Like, and that's mm -hmm. why I appreciate it so much because I'm really learning so much about the craft and learning so much about myself and it's just becoming to be fun and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's getting fun at what you would think the worst part of it for me. Like my audience will probably think like, oh man, a year ago you were so lit. You feel me? Like, and like, that was the, the worst time for me, to be honest. Like that was the hardest time. Cause I felt a pressure of having to continue to, uh, hit those metrics and get those guests every week because it was like at a point i was getting them so I like i'm not trying to let my audience down but now it's like yo hey if you get an ace hood this week appreciate that motherfucker. <laughs> watch it twice then because ain't no guarantee i'm gonna get it next you know what i'm saying like i'm good like it's like it's cool you feel me like it it, it, it feels good to be here and i don't know it, it feels great it feels amazing to be here and i wish everybody could uh could feel this because I understand that pressure that creatives get, entrepreneurs get, like just in mm -hmm. general, like right? just trying to like not being able to enjoy the moment, right? Like that's anxiety to another level. Like the soon as you, as soon as something positive happened, your friends are like, "Yo, that's lit, bro. What's next?" And I'm like, "Nigga, what? Like, you, can we like <laughs> you see this? <laughs> like this is this is this? Like, yo, bro, this that's is lit, bro. You just had Ti. Like, who you about to get next? Like, yo." Hold on. Like, you, I bet you enjoy this one. <laughs> yeah, like, do you understand that this doesn't come often? Like, all right. Facts. Okay, like, Facts. Like, Facts. Like, Facts. Facts. I, you know, the crazy part is, is that like, it is the public that puts that pressure on you, but you put the pressure on yourself because now you, you know, once again, like you have to remove the bullets from the gun from yourself. Like, like I, I saw a video where a guy was like, you know, uh, we have to set expectations for ourselves so we can continue to grow, but we have to be conscious not to allow those expectations to be turned into bullets that we put in a gun that we shoot ourselves with. Mm. And I was like, yeah, yeah, because all right, let's just say you set goals for yourself. To, like, yo, I got to run 10 miles every week or 20 miles, whatever the goal is mm -hmm. Say you don't hit that goal. Now you start judging yourself, man, fuck it. I'm a fuck up. Oh, I ain't doing it. And it's just like, Bro, you know what I'm saying? We are human beings. We need to have as 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 healthy uh leaders, we need to have goals for ourselves, but we cannot allow that to define us if we hit it or if we don't hit it or if and, you know, the worst part is if you shoot way past it. So now you continue to put pressure on yourself and pressure and pressure and pressure. But what that does is, man, you make yourself not necessarily physically sick, 
but you put yourself under so much pressure that you could give yourself a heart attack. You can give yourself an aneurysm. But hold that though. I do want to, because I don't want to, I don't want to get these niggas excuses. I'm sorry. I have to disagree a little bit only because yeah. we shouldn't be okay with setting goals and failing. Right. But mm -hmm. allow, don't allow that to have you think differently about yourself. Right. Correct. You should Correct. allow that to have you think differently about how you approached it. Correct. Did you set a goal that was attainable? Right. Correct. After you set a goal that was attainable, did you put the right steps in place to be able to attain this goal? Right. Did Correct. you do what you needed to do? If I had a goal of 10, 10 miles to run in a week, how many days did you run? Was that attainable? Mm -hmm. You know, you got your daughter uh, two days on, two days off. Can you do that? Right. Is mm -hmm. that doable? OK, let's mm -hmm. go back to the drawing, drawing board. OK, so mm -hmm. if you can do that, that means what did you do when you didn't have your daughter? You had two days. Mm -hmm. You didn't have your daughter. Did you run five miles? Was it too hard that day? Was you did you have too much? Okay, cool. Did you do, do two and a half? Like you know what I'm saying? Like, like let's not be okay with just all right, I'm human. I mean, may a little bit, right? We I, I feel like somebody on um a threads had made a tweet or a thread that was like, anybody seen uh empathy? <laughs> like anybody know where to find empathy or something like that? Like, now nah, be careful with empathy, empathy, that motherfucker gets you killed. But whatever. I say that to say is like, yeah, understand that you're a human, but let's have some self-accountability as well right one let's start with having accountability at setting obtainable goals goals that you can do that you can manage and get like don't just set a goal because you want to set a goal i'm gonna do 100 miles this this week boy but yeah yeah i definitely agree with that i and but i'm a, i'm gonna I'm pivot just a little bit and say is the is the goal you set the appropriate goal to get what you want mm. like I, I like sometimes we get so focused and remember i sent you a video earlier this week and i actually have it here in the joint where it was like you could be so obsessed over the product and then the business still fail. Mm. And then you feel like the solution to getting the business to work is to keep working on the product. And it's like, there's so much other stuff that's involved in the business. You, you can't be so, and that's just a point of maybe running isn't the thing. If you know the best, if you know, getting your health to the perfect place is it, then maybe it may not be running 10 miles. Maybe it's running five miles and then yoga and a couple of hours in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe yoga you could do with your daughter around, you know what I mean? Or like maybe you got a, there's a gym that has a playground for the, for the, for the baby. So now you can still go to the gym. The baby can be taken care of and everything's cool. So like, but because the overall goal is your optimum health. Mm. Facts. spiritual growth Facts. you know what i'm saying and 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 spending time you know recentering yourself in whatever way possible but uh yeah. i do want to run this clip real quick because i want to continue having this conversation about uh about business <laughs> okay, I'll give you a prime example of that. Like to so say, if we are competing against and we're definitely not. But if we were going to compete against the Joe Button podcast, does it make does it really give a shit whether or not we have a website? No, because the value of what Joe Button's network or the Joe Button podcast is it's not about his website. Mm. A lot of people don't even know he has a fucking website. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Only, only like crazy fanatic fans like me are going to know, you know, the website, where it is. Same thing even with merch. He doesn't even talk about his merch. He doesn't even wear his merch a lot. Like he might merit 
every now and then, like once one episode a month. And he does like 15 episodes a month. But because his the value of the business is not built around merch and it's not built around a website It's definitely built off of his YouTube It's definitely built off of his audio. And it's also built off of his relationships in his his position in the entertainment industry and how he sees it. Mm. That's how he's built his value. So if you if and this is just giving you an example of if the J Hill Live wanted to go against that, well, then we would need to be speaking about the industry from our perspective. You know what I mean? I, we would need to use your relationships to add value to that discussion. And then we would need to be making sure that we're competing on YouTube, making sure that our captions are this and making sure that our frequency is there and, and making sure that the quality and the conversations are going to be the same. And like, those are the things that you have to do. But a lot of times what we get so uh, addicted to is we want to make his our Instagram look like his Instagram. It's like, nah, nigga, like, that's not what it's about. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? And you got to understand that his history and our history are different. This man had a 20 year head start on the internet being a celebrity <clears throat> utilizing. Yo, this nigga was broke. Majority of his career, he utilized his relationship with his girl to, to leverage his space, to give him more visibility. He fucking put his girl on like he would the handy cam with his girl every fucking second he could bro for a decade before we got to love and hip-hop he mm. was loving hip-hop before loving hip-hop but anyway um just as a discussion about i think but i think but, i think that's absolutely right because even i was looking up because i was like man let me look up the definition of value chain uh, it says a value chain refers to a full life cycle of a product or process including material sourcing producing consumption and disposable and disposal recycling processes so like that's the whole cycle from a to z i, I think of and um when you was talking it made me think like because even now i was talking to my guy wolf right i feel like i started over like i haven't said anything to nobody or whatever but it was a time a long time where i was inconsistent with my audio i've always been inconsistent with my audio so recently i've been like doing my videos because that's what i pay the most attention to i've been doing mm. it from beginning to end and what does that look like so i edit it right mm -hmm. i then upload the audio mm -hmm. i then create a title and uh mm -hmm. description mm -hmm. then i download the video i upload the video i make that same title and description then i do the clips but from a to z also right i've been trying to get more entrepreneurs in so i can go back to dropping wednesday and sunday this is this whole value chain so when you say when you say like competing with joe button right the first thing i think of is before i can even compete with anybody i gotta set the market i gotta do what what's being done right mm. so what's being done they're dropping they're releasing so i can't compete if i'm not releasing so let me start releasing they're doing audio, they move like professionals. So I need to move like a professional. That means I have to have my audio out at a certain date, certain time. So my so my audience can at least expect when, so they can know what they expect, know when I'm dropping, right? right. These are the things that we got to focus on first. Like right. these are the things that, before you want to talk about numbers, before you want to talk right. about who's watching, let's right. focus on- The fundamentals. How, the fundamentals, that's it. The foundation. Yeah, the and yep. then you can graduate to, maybe looking right. at the views right? exactly like, exactly and i think um that's crazy that you said that because i literally have just i just started this maybe like a week ago like you'll see i'm dropping an episode tonight like it's like i'm going mm -hmm. back to to square one like let's 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 get back into the swing of things that's yeah. that had a major part of why i was being number top 50 podcasts in the country right you never know but let's get back to that because you i learned this in high school you can't compare projects when the variables are different so let me get the mm. variables close to the same as possible. Mm. And then I can say, oh, damn, Jay, you fell off. I can't say that because you went, I ain't doing what I was doing a year ago. Let's get back mm. to that. And then we can measure mm. the success of your business. Right, exactly. And then also, you, we also have to remember you don't service the same audience and you're not in the same space. So you do have to find out what your audience is reacting to and you have to give them more of that, meaning that if 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 joe button's audience is 
you know, expecting the podcast on Wednesday and Saturday. Well, that's when the time they're most online. But if your audience is online on Mondays, and Thursdays, then you need to service them on Mondays and Thursdays. Mm. You need to catch your audience when they're in the mood to listen. You know, give it to them then. You know what I mean? Uh, same thing with like, I know it got annoying because you was like, man, you don't want to keep talking about Baltimore shit, but like, you know, Joe Button isn't a rap nigga, rap, rap nigga talking about that. Majority of his discussions are going to be centered around that. Our world at the time was Baltimore hip hop. So like if we had impact because the majority of our audience comes from Baltimore. Mm. And when we talk, it reverberates into our space. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And people react to that shit. So if we was to say the top five blood from Baltimore is this, I guarantee our comments is going to have 200 replies of either going for or against whatever we're doing. Whereas if we was outside of Baltimore, it's not going to, people are not going to, have that same reaction. Mm. You have to go where you're going to get the biggest engagement, where you're going to have the most effect. And then you can slowly pivot, you know, left and right. But I feel like sometimes what happens is people get too big, too fast, meaning that you forget what the core is and you pivot away from it. And then you wonder like, well, why everybody not pivoting with me? It's just like, well, because the energy you had was built around this base. Yeah. I did an interview um, the other day and the guy asked me, I've been asked this question before though. The guy asked me, why don't I think I get the recognition like all the other big podcasts? And because I'm not a big podcast. <laughs> nah, because he was giving my respect. He was like, man, no, but he was like uh not like a Joe Button or like a Nori. I guess he was talking more so like a I don't know, like a um, let's say a David Shans or a, a Finesse's Only Club, or mm. um, I don't know, um it's plenty of uh, uh, a Mandy, right? And I think I told I told her my answer. And shout out to Mandy because she she actually helped me figure this out. But I was saying because I think my my platform doesn't focus on me. My platform, I'm an interviewer. Like I don't. It's like yeah, mm-hmm. we do podcasts, but my platform itself was built off of being a, a interviewer. Mm-hmm. And being a good interviewer is not really about the interviewee, the, about the interviewer. It's about the person that's being interviewed. So All I right. think, and I told him that I think that's probably why. I don't get the recognition. However, what I can what I can say and I do appreciate and God is good because I get the recognition. This might sound arrogant, but I get the recognition from the people y'all recognizing. Correct. And that feels amazing. That feels great. Like the people that you're thinking that I should be standing beside, I do stand beside because he was like, yeah, you got the numbers. You got like. Like all everything, if you look at it, if you line it up side by side, you got everything in it. Sometimes you'll be honest a little bit more. He said it. And I was like, but because my platform is an interviewer and like it's been times where I think my platform is bigger than me. Whereas though everybody else, if you think about right. it, they are synonymous with their platform. Like you think of like a, a finesse, like my dog. But if you think of finesse, like you think of him and his platform, you know what I'm saying? Like you, like, you know, the work that he put in for his, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you can see, like, you don't see his platform without him. Like right. far as me. I feel like I've built something where if I stepped out, I think it could, as long as the interview is good, I think it could live kind of like a Vlad almost, if that makes sense. Right? Maybe. But I say to say, like, it's really just interview. Like, I think my platform, people would see, people would see my, my interviews and they would know my interviews before they would know me. Like I was, I would, I would meet them. I would say, hi, I'm Jay Hill. I probably was showing one of my interviews. Then they would be like, oh, I know who you are. Whereas though on the other end, if you were to meet a Mandy, if you was to meet a, a David Shane, it would be like, oh shit. I know you because you do that podcast. You know what I'm saying? Whereas with me, is the opposite. Right, right. Yeah, I, no, no, I definitely feel you on that. Uh, and that's because your purpose and their purpose is different. Like, your purpose was, I want to do interviews. So, like, yeah. you did interviews with industry people. Whereas Finesse, you know, is really all about... His, his whole thing was really trying to educate people coming out of jail on the journey and then trying to help people transition from being, you know, illegal operators outside of the law into how learning how to use that skill set and then do it legally mm-hmm. uh you know david shans is more business related you know what i mean and then like you know finesse kind of moved into doing relationship kind of stuff or i don't i don't know it's just like find bad bitches and have sexy <laughs> conversation that, that's <laughs> really good that nigga be, do hey me. be provocative because it sells nigga it sells <laughs> like, nigga. <laughs> you know what I mean? finesse within itself like yo his shit is a yo he's a, he's a paradox within a paradox which <laughs> which makes him super interesting right. but like um it's so you know fire. like it it, it, it 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 you still have an undefined 
space. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, like this, we've never said J Hill stands for what? Like, you know what I mean? But, but that's a blessing because mm-hmm. it's like you are trying, you, you've been on a journey trying to find yourself so that you can find your purpose or mm-hmm. you've been trying to find your purpose to help define yourself. Or, you know what I mean? You know, I don't know which one comes first, chicken or the egg, but you know what I mean? The, the, the bottom line is, is that, wow, I didn't mean to knock that out, but like, that's been a part of the greatness of this. People have seen you grow mm-hmm. and they've seen you you by not forcing a narrative on any person people have been able to come on your platform present themselves without being forced to make a decision or judgment or anything and they just been able to tell a story which makes it super dope you know what i mean because you're not trying to tell them well you should change your life or you should do this you do that. you just been like what's your story mm-hmm. you know and what what have you learned and what can we learn from your thing mm. you know what i mean and if anything else you've just kind of like told people like man i'm hearing what you're saying and this is affecting me like blah mm. and i feel like it's almost like a therapy session yeah you know what I mean? without a therapist and i think that's super cool and but even still i'm just like i'm bro i'm happy in the space i'm in like it's like because when he asked me that question i can't even say that um i don't know like i don't because it's like am i not being recognized in that space because they recognize me i i definitely feel like they recognize me for sure now Am I recognized on the big stages that they might get their recognition from? Maybe not, right? Like, is a is a invest fest calling me saying, "Yo, I want you to be on a, the stage." No, but I haven't made that real relationship with him. David Shans is calling me saying, "I want you to be on the stage." You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I mean, like, at- you are an industry nigga, but you don't play you you don't you don't deal with the industry. For and sure. That's yeah, for sure, hundred <laughs> percent. Like my thing is. I know exactly what space I occupy because I knew what I wanted to be from the beginning. Like I never, once again, never wanted to be famous, but I knew that the thing that I wanted most was for people within the industry of Baltimore hip hop to respect me. When I come through the door, the important niggas is going to dap me up and I'm going to have a place at the table. And when I said something, it was respected. That's all I wanted. When I Mm. got that, I was like, oh, I'm I'm good. Like, as long as the niggas that's in charge, the niggas that hold the bag, know me by my first name and, and are, are going to be happy to see me and open up their purse for me whenever I need it. Cool. That's all I needed. I ain't really need nothing else. I didn't give a fuck about these new rap niggas or any of them niggas.